Welcome back into the Miller's Edge, presented by the Good Feet Store, America's arch support experts. And we are now joined by my good friend, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Stephen, I wish I was as good as you at the intros. You know, every time you intro me or my dad on y'all's podcast, the Bama Standard, it's incredible. I mean, you you, you honestly are the best to do it. So, I, unfortunately, I'm not as talented as you are. But thanks so much for coming on and joining the show. How are you this morning? I'm I'm doing fantastic, guys. I mean, uh, I'm not I'm not one to drink, but I'm right here with my two favorite Millers right here, so I can't, can't beat that. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, you know, we wanted to get you on here because you're 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 the Alabama football expert, man. I mean, you, you know it every you know everything, right? Recruiting to the team, so we had to get your expertise and, and knowledge and bring you on the show. You always are uh, gracious and let us join y'all's podcast. So we finally got you here on the Miller's Edge, presented by the Good Feet Store. So, Stephen, just overall, what are your what are your thoughts, uh, kind of going into this season? Kind of just you know maybe even recap a little bit on you know your thoughts after seeing this Alabama football team during the spring, kind of where you think they're at and, and, and what you're expecting this upcoming fall. I'm actually, I'm actually guys really excited about this season going back to the spring. Uh, we saw a lot of good things defensively. Kevin Steele has brought a swagger, a toughness, a, an energy, a motivation to this defense. And, and you saw it in the spring guys flying to the football. 11 guys attacking the ball, attacking the play, not thinking as much, but read, react, see the play, attack the play. And we saw, you know, a lot of that high energy on the field there in the spring defensively. And that has me really excited, especially after the last two years. You really did not see that on a consistent basis. You know, offensively, people are up in arms about the quarterback battle between, uh, you know, Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson, Tyler Buckner of a transfer from Notre Dame, but I feel like that will kind of solve itself out depending on which one takes to what Tommy Reese wants to do the best. you got a lot of talent surrounding that quarterback position, whether it's on the offensive line with veteran players back and also great freshman guys coming in, wide receiver, you're loaded with talent. Guys are going to be able to consistently catch the ball, but you're loaded with talent there, uh, running back and tight end as well. So, uh, going back to the spring, guys, there was a lot to be excited about, but especially just seeing the energy, the motivation, and just the enthusiasm that Kevin Steele has brought here to this defense. Is it your opinion, Stephen, that, that Kevin Steele uh, was the answer for this defense? I know at the time, right, and I even you know, swing that question towards the offense as well with Tommy Reese. You know, at the time when Alabama was searching for these two coordinators, there was a lot of names thrown out uh, on, on both sides. And uh, they ended up hiring Tommy Reed's offensive coordinator and Kevin Steele as defensive coordinator. And there was kind of some mixed reviews from the fans. Do you feel like those are the two guys that were the best fit for Alabama? I think so. But because of the fact that, I mean, let's be honest, people love sexy names. They love splash hires. They love the bells and whistles. So when the search for both coordinators started, of course, people are going to flock to uh, defensively the Glenn Schumann, the Jim Leonard, the, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the Jimmy, the Jimmy Nakes. You know, those names that really get you to a TV set because they're splash names. Same thing offensively. People are going to flock to the Garrett Rileys of the world, the uh, Jeff Levies of the world, those names that get you to a TV set. But at the end of the day, you have to be a fit for Alabama. There's, there's the fit, and then there's the fit for Alabama. And when I look at Kevin Field, he's the fit for Alabama. He's been under Coach Saban before. He understands what is going to be expected in terms of uh, the style, the discipline, uh, the effort, the want to how to play to that level of standard that you know, Alabama holds itself to consistently. And then for Tommy Reese, Nick Saban has talked about you know, getting back to having a more balanced attack, running the football more, having more of that 12 to 22 personnel in there using double tight end sets. Now, yes, of course, he's still going to want to pass the ball too. You're not going to want to give up too much of what you've seen from the likes of Tua Tagovailoa, Max Jones, Bryce Young, you know, those names right there. But at the same time, Saban does want that balance. So 
while it was sort of mixed reviews from fans, because we all, as consumers of this game, we like seeing the flashy names out there. But at the end of the day, both guys, Steele and Reese, they fit what Saban wants to have done here in Tuscaloosa. M. Smith, you know, you don't have the A in the middle of your name, but it's M, which we like the M because it's the Miller's at. So, you know, you always like family, bro. So appreciate you, you jumping on with us here on a, a lovely Monday. Talking about, you know, Kevin Steele and like minded Nick Saban type guys. And, you know, getting back, we talked about <clears throat> the standard. As you look at the standard, I asked this question a while back on your podcast about. You know, can they get the standard back? Um, uh, uh, we talked about bringing a, a more former players around, having them talk to guys. We heard what Ha Ha Clinton did said about the I mentioned Tony Mitchell who had gotten some trouble and how he's helping guys like that. Do you see the standard getting back to what we became accustomed to seeing for so many years? I I think Corey, that starts this this upcoming this upcoming season right here, right because. Part of getting back to that standard, like you mentioned, you have to reinvest in the program, get guys that have been a part of this thing before, they know what it's like, they've been in the grind, the trenches, they know what it takes to win that championship, the blood, sweat, and tears it takes. And I know it sounds cliche, but you don't know what it takes to win something until you've been in something or involved in something. And for Nick Saban, having a ha-ha Clinton Dix back in here, you know, a two-time national a national champion, a, an all-American safety, having guys like um, a, a Jamie Mosley back in this program that understands it, having guys like a, a Josh Chapman, a Denzel Duvall in this program that understand it. So reinvesting with former players that have played under you, but they're, at, they're, they're around the age range of these players. They can speak to these players in a way that they understand it. They know, hey, this guy's been in the NFL. He's been at where I'm trying to get to. He's played for Coach Saban before. So when this guy speaks, he's around my age range. He knows what it's like. So while Coach Saban is speaking something, and while it's imperative to hear the way Coach Saban is speaking it, hearing it how Ha Ha Clinton Dix is speaking it, I can relate more to that. Steven, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. And because I, I look back at when I was uh, on campus here at Alabama, you know, as, as a player, and I, I, you know, I always remember guys, former players coming back to the, the weight room, to the facility to train, do rehab, do treatment, you know, because that's how, you know, they, 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 they welcome their former players uh, with open arms. And so there's so often that you would see former guys around the program that weren't working. They, you know, these guys are still playing in the league where they're coming back to train and work out. And it was always, um, you know, so beneficial speaking to these guys uh, because I remember, matter of fact, I think it was Dre Kirkpatrick. One day I was in the hot tubs and uh, me and several other guys and, and, and Dre would just happen to be there. And he just, you know, we started, you know, chopping it up with them. And then it ended up turning into, a, you know, some valuable lessons. He was basically, you know, putting us on game about a bunch of stuff and about the standard and about, you know, how they used to do things. And it was, it was those types of conversations with former players uh, that kind of created that unity, you know, that kind of tied, you know, the, the older generation with the newer generation where he would pass down or these former players would pass down, you know, their experiences, you know, what the standard was, you know, what the expectations and kind of just give us, you know, what we call game about everything and just how to approach the process. And, and we would listen because like you just alluded to, you know, young guys, they listen, you know, to, to figures of authority, but they really it really resonates when they're talking to somebody who looks like them, who walks the same walk as them, you know, another athlete who's in a position where they want to get to. So I think you're spot on. I think it's imperative to have former players around the program as much as often, uh, because you know, those are your vessels. They're vessels for coach Saban to get that message across because they can relate to these guys. So I, I think you're spot on. I want to ask you, we saw the addition of Tyler Buckner transfer from uh, Notre Dame uh, into that quarterback room that already consisted of Jalen Milrow and Ty Simpson and the two freshman uh, quarterbacks. So now there's like five scholarship quarterbacks. I know no one knows the answer to this question. and even, even not, The coaches don't. But in your opinion, you know, from what you've seen from Jalen Milrow and Ty Simpson and probably the tape that you've gotten to watch on, on Tyler Buckner, who do you think has the edge right now to be the starter in week one for Alabama? 
Man, it, it, it is so it is so hard to depict this because all three of them bring a, something different. You can look at Jalen Milrow. We see a dynamic athlete with his legs, with his feet, with his ability to to run and escape and and make plays athletically. Uh, we saw that last season. We want to see more of his passing element improve, and we saw a bit more of that in the spring. He did have. Uh, some really good passes out there, including two touchdown passes to Malik Benson and Emmanuel Henderson. Uh, this whole summer thus far, uh, milrow has been down there in Tampa, Florida, working with you know some trainers. He took some receivers with him to, to work on that passing. If that really comes into fruition, Milrow's dangerous. When you look at Ty Simpson, he brings you more of that passing element, but he's athletic as well. He's got crazy ability with his legs to get away and extend plays. We saw that in the spring. And then with Tyler Buckner, he's got the most, I guess, in-game experience of all three quarterbacks playing in 13 games at Notre Dame. Now, yes, Notre Dame is different from the University of Alabama, but still big-time marquee power five college football, and you cannot undervalue that experience that he brings. And from watching his tape, you know, even going back to some of his high school tape from California, uh, the guy's got an arm. He's accurate with the football. Now, where he gets in trouble, Ed, is when he tries to throw off of his back foot. And when that happens, it takes from the accuracy. It takes from the, from the velocity of the pass. So the ball kind of hangs, and it allows the defensive back to catch it and make the play. But when he's not throwing off his back foot, he's spot on. So, you know, all three guys bring something different to the table. My question is going to be, is which one of these three really gravitates to, okay, I don't have to play hero ball, play my role, make plays when I have to make those big plays, and just have the entire team trust me. For Milro, if he's got that pass in order, it can very well be him. Ty Simpson, if he feels like, hey, I can take over this team, it'll be him. But for Tyler Buckner, because he already has prior relationship with Tommy Reese from Notre Dame, the question for Buckner, how quickly could he adjust to the culture for his Tuscaloosa? If he can adjust fast to this learning curve that's here in the South, it could very well be him. But it, it, it's hard to depict it right now just due to all the newness. Stephen M. Smith is our guest on the Miller's Edge on the Tide 100.9, talking to Alabama football and talking quarterbacks. I'm actually riding with a college quarterback, former college quarterback, Richie Harrington, plays with Oregon State, my teammate today. But when you look at Miro, I think he's going to be the starter just because of that athleticism. But, Stephen, would a guy like that, I know you said he's down in Florida working on the skills, footwork and that type of thing, wouldn't he reach out to a Jalen Hurts, potentially a guy that people said the same thing, more of an athlete instead of a complete quarterback, but he worked on his game and and he led his team to the Super Bowl, the Philadelphia Eagles. Do you think there will be some type of relationship and or communication there? I think, Corey, uh, Jalen Hurts would be, a, would be a fantastic person for Miro to reach out to for the, for the things that you mentioned right there. Uh, Hurts came in 2016, a uh, very talented athlete, gifted athlete, uh, but Saban challenged him as a passer, and not only did uh, Hurts understand the challenge, but he – Stepped up to the challenge in his final year at Alabama before going to Oklahoma to link, hook up with Lincoln Riley. He improved his passing with Dan Enos as the quarterback coach in 2018. And then got with Lincoln Riley in 2019, saw him become a Heisman Trophy finalist. And what he's doing in the NFL is absolutely incredible. Another guy I think Milro would benefit from would be Blake Sam. I mean, here's a guy, you know, came in 2010 as an athlete played several positions before becoming the starting quarterback in 2014 when very few people believed that Sims could be the starting quarterback. And and lo and behold, I mean, look what he did his final year, his first year as a starter, over 3,000 passing yards, had a single-season score record, 35 total touchdowns, took that Alabama team, and and Christian, in your first year, took that team to an SEC championship, got into the college football playoff, and Almost got him to a national championship, so Jalen Hurts would be a good, be a great mentor for him, but also Blake Sims. I, I really like that that Blake Sims reference right there because I always explain 
anytime people are talking about the quarterback battle and who's going to be the quarterback, I always reference that year uh, because you're exactly right. You're talking about uh, a guy who was playing running back, defensive back on the scout field, a majority of his career really just, you know, a Swiss Army knife playing everything almost but quarterback. He really was just kind of, you know, a scout team quarterback, I believe, uh, to kind of prep for, you know, these mobile quarterbacks teams were facing. And like you just said, I mean, you went on to say all the, the stats and accolades that, that he accomplished that year. But that's why I always reference. I mean, at the end of the day, when you have a stellar defense who can kind of help, you know, create some comfort for your offense as they're kind of going through those growing pains and figuring things out, um, you'd be surprised how far a team can go, not to mention how these guys can step up once they kind of, you know, get their feet wet and, and, and assert themselves uh, in, in that respective role. So I, I, th I agree. I think uh, Blake, Blake Sims would be a phenomenal uh, support for, for Jalen Milrow, and he could definitely probably offer him some good advice on, on how to approach this upcoming season and, and what he needs to do uh, to give himself the best chance to be successful. I want to talk about real quick some of the, the incoming guys, Stephen. We saw Alabama so assign another top-ranked recruiting class highlighted by you know guys like Caleb Downs, Justice Haynes, Keon Keeley, and many more, right? What recruit do you see making the biggest impact in their first year? And it can be out of any of the guys, not just the three I named. Well, I, I, look, at, I look at just off the rip right here, just watching uh, Justice Haynes uh, – out of Buford High School in Georgia, and what he did across four years, over 7,000 rushing yards, I mean, 95 touchdowns. The guy is compactly built, but when you watch him work on the field, when you watch him compete, when you watch him go out there and battle, I mean, he reminds you of so many Alabama running backs that came through this program, but he brings his own style, he brings his own flavor to it. And, you know, Coach David mentioned, hey, if you're just a guy sitting out there, and you're just watching, and you're looking at him, you wouldn't even know this young man's a freshman. And just watching Nick Saban compliment this young man. But, and then, you know, Haynes, not just, you know, letting the compliments come, but he's continuing to work. I mean, this entire offseason, he's been somewhere in a gym, whether it's, weight, whether it's weight work, whether it's agility work, whether it's speed work. He's putting some type of work in to prepare himself to know, hey, I'm not going to be sitting in the pine my freshman year. I'm going to have an impact. Yes, Jace McClellan is outstanding. Yes, I got Roy Williams competing. Yes, I got Jim Miller competing. Yes, the other five-star, Richard Young is there too. But Justice Haynes, it's almost like almost every single day you turn on social media, he's doing some type of work. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what that young man does. And then uh, this other guy, not necessarily a freshman, but Malik Benson, from a, from a wide receiver standpoint. Yes, he's a, just, he's, a, he's a JUCO guy, but I look at him as he could be the person that could give you some of what Jamison Williams gave you in 2021 in terms of that speed, uh, that take the top off of defense with his burst, with his, his, uh, his acceleration, his explosive playmaking ability. So uh, Justice Haynes, from a freshman standpoint, from a JUCO standpoint, but yes, this is his first year also in Alabama. I definitely look at Malik Benson. Yeah, I like all those guys. I think the, the running back room is going to be tremendous uh, for Alabama. And with Tommy Reese, I, I, I see a strong running game. I see, you know, tight end, 12 personnel, and controlling the clock. I see, you know, this offense transitioning to that play action pass. It's not yet the running option with Milro and or Tyson for whomever the quarterback's going to be. But I do want to ask you this, because a lot's been talked about the schedule going forward, but I want to talk about the schedule this year. Last year, Alabama had to go on the road at Tennessee, at LSU, at Ole Miss, tough road games, all those teams, top 20 teams. This year, they get them at home. Uh, I was listening and reading to some folks that were saying that LSU is going to be the new standard uh, in the West this year. They felt like Brian Kelly is going to have his LSU team uh, at the top. That being said, with Alabama's schedule, although we don't know the quarterback's going to be there, a lot of unanswered questions. We know that, Stephen. But do you think the schedule this year sets up beautifully for Alabama going forward? I think I think it sets up better, Corey. Just like just like the thing that you mentioned, all of the tough games are in Brian Denny, right? So you're going to have the energy of the crowd. You're going to you're going to be in your 
uh, controlled environment. You talk about your face in Tennessee, you know, in Tuscaloosa. You got LSU in Tuscaloosa. You got Ole Miss in Tuscaloosa. You got Texas, week two of the season. Steve Sarkeesian comes to Tuscaloosa. So all of those tough games, you got at home. Uh, you got the crowd on your side here at home. Uh, the main thing for Alabama this season is, uh, and the players have talked about it, cutting down the penalties. We saw last year there were several undisciplined moments, uncharacteristic undisciplined moments for, from Alabama, whether it was against Tennessee on the road having 17 penalties, whether there was other games where you saw those mistakes that you don't necessarily see an Alabama football team make in beating itself. So the schedule sets up better with more of the games, challenging games at home inside Brian Denny. But the biggest thing for Alabama, and Coach Saban has harped on this a lot, is you cannot have the mental errors, the mistakes, the penalties. Yes, you're going to have some penalties where you're playing hard, you're playing tough, you're playing aggressive, and and those happen because of the effort and the energy that's being exhausted out there. But those mistakes that you can't have, the fall starts, the the jumping out, the jumping off sides, the a lot of the past interference things that you know the technique and you trust the technique, just that the penalties that come from a lack of focus, you can't have those. Good stuff. Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, thank you so much for joining us. Before we let you go, tell everybody where they can follow you and, and read up on all your good stuff that you got going on. Absolutely, guys. I appreciate you guys having me here on today. They can always uh, find me at Touchdown Alabama, uh, touchdownalabama.com. Touchdownalabama.com is the site. We are breaking down the Crimson Tide from all angles there. Uh, you can also catch me, uh, Touchdown Alabama Magazine, on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 6.30 Central. I have my show, In My Own Words, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, on YouTube. Uh, 6.30 Central, we're talking Bama right there. But then every Tuesday night at 6 o'clock Central, you can catch me on the Bama Standard there on YouTube with Justin Riley, Marvin Constant, Carmen, uh, Comedy Legend Steve Brown, Bo Scarborough. We always laugh and poke fun at each other and just talk football. Definitely. No, if, if, if y'all haven't checked their uh, podcast out or, or Touchdown Alabama Magazine out, they have some really good content, good especially the podcast. Yeah, it's hilarious. Y'all go check that out. Stephen M. Smith, thank you again for joining us.